The Charity Commission says it's to review the accounts of the charity set up in honour of Captain Sir Tom Moore. Accounts show that the Captain Tom Foundation gave out grants of 160 grand to four charities and paid out more than 162 grand in management costs in its first year. You'll remember, of course, back at the start of the pandemic, Captain Sir Tom walked a hundred laps of his Bedfordshire garden at the start of lockdown, raising some 33 million pounds for the NHS. That money was given out, doled out, sent out to the NHS charities in order to reach the people that needed it most in that organisation. However, after his death, his family set up a foundation to carry on the legacy of Sir Tom's um, fundraising in order to, to earmark money to those causes that meant something to him. Um, According to the published accounts covering the charity's first year from the 5th of May to the 31st of May 2021, that's 2020 to 2021, it paid out grants to four charities worth 40 grand each, but spent £209,000 on support costs, including £162,000 on what's being described as management. The financial statement also showed reimbursement costs of 16 grand paid to a company called Club Nook Limited, a company run by Captain Sir Tom Moore's daughter. These costs were for accommodation, security and transport relating to Captain Sir Tom travelling around the UK to promote the charitable company. Payments of 37 grand were also made to Matrix Group Limited, a company run by Miss Ingram Moore and her husband, relating to photography, office rental, telephone and third-party consultancy costs. Um, the financial statement said these costs were initially funded by Matrix Group Limited on behalf of the charitable company and reimbursed when sufficient funds were available, according to the financial statement. The Charity Commission have said, we have been in ongoing contact with the trustees of the Captain, Sir, Captain Tom Foundation on its setup and governance arrangements, and as part of this work, we will now assess the charity's recently submitted accounts. And I wonder what you make of that. Because... The, the the truth of it is that there is no indication of of wrong, wrongdoing here, but the Charity Commission is having a look because what? As you see it, what? Why why are they having a look? What does it say that they are having a look? What does it say to you that and, and this is where it would be helpful to have people who do this kind of thing who know a bit about it. Is it really all that uncommon for charities to pay for c consultancy costs, management costs, in order to help the running of that charity, and also to pay off loans made to it by, it happens to be, in this case, the family of the people who have started it up? That's Is that unreasonable? Is it unreasonable in the sums that have been accounted for here, that more than half have gone in management costs in the first year, whereas... 160 grand, less than half, has been paid out to four charities. Let's get some advice. Seven minutes past 11. Joseph Cotchy Monson is director of Mary Monson Solicitors on Fleet Street and is a legal commentator. Thank you very much for coming on the programme, Joseph. Good evening, Tom. What does this all say to you? Well, I think, first of all, with the Captain Tom story, you had to have a heart of stone at the time, didn't you, to not find his story wonderful? Uh, uh, what you've described, of course, apparently concerning at first blush. I think, however, there may be a lot, there may well be a lot less to see here than, than some of the newspapers who've leapt on this, who, who may be hoping that we buy their, their issues tomorrow, uh, uh, would have us believe. I think the first thing to say is that this, the kind of statutory compliance investigation that's ongoing uh, here by the Charity Commission is fundamentally bureaucratic in nature. This is not a criminal investigation. Yeah. You've rightly said no suggestion of wrongdoing. It's not the police. It's not the SFO. Uh, the uh, zero suggestion of anything underhand. But this is a regulator that also acts as an advisor and educator to charities. One of its stated goals is actually giving charities the understanding and tools they need to succeed. And of course, this was, if we cast our minds back, uh, a charity that came about very much on the hoof, set up by the same people who were who'd encouraged uh, Captain Tom in the first place to do these videos and were putting the videos uh, up on uh, social media uh, and, and, and promoting them. Uh, the story of that 
the Captain Tom Foundation actually begins in those first weeks in May 2020, early in that kind of rocket, rocketing to fame uh, of, of the celebrated captain, then colonel, then knight. Uh -huh. uh, initially, it appears that rather than actual fundraising or as well as fundraising, and this is from what I can make out, they were also providing support, and I think you've mentioned this, to Captain Tom's fundraising efforts. And of course, we remember those fantastic walks, but mm -hmm. those mobile videos were, were produced and promoted by his family. And that no doubt involved a back room that became, one might assume, kind of, or presume, became rapidly professionalized, albeit by people who weren't very experienced. Uh, the, sorry. No, no, I was just, I was just interested because you're, it may well be that you're completely right that the cost involved in doing this became quite a lot given the attention that was on it and so that needed to be funded somehow but i'm just interested in the idea that what what are the what are the rules around i don't know percentage of amount donated to an organization that needs to go to the causes that it says it's supporting rather well, than on costs well if you think about it tom some some organizations their goal although charitable is not to raise money so those proportions would be if you raise them out of context would yeah. be similarly alarming oh look at they've had all this money but they haven't given out any of the money to charity and of course this came in the context of a national campaign in the course of which no doubt in part to the support that they were providing, presumably, and I don't have all the facts, to Captain Tom himself, raised £35 million because, of course, he and thereby they were actually encouraging that, that most of the donations went to a specific named NHS yeah. charity yeah. for workers. So, so that part of the way that this is reported... Uh, you know, it sounds sexier and, 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 you know, a little bit more despicable and, and, you know, or insidious than it r really is, I have to say. But at, at the same time, there appear on the face of it, and we've got to be very careful Absolutely here because right. it's an ongoing investigation. But it looks like there, there is a, certainly there is the, an investigation into whether there have been breaches into another aspect. And that's that where you have related parties, and that's the, the, the term that is used for when you have a person involved in an organization or a company who is uh, linked by a separate financial arrangement. And we can see that these, these other marketing services have been provided certain steps and, and ring fenced kind of approaches need to be in or uh, policies need to be in place for example the spending of that money the decision making on that can't have anything to do with the people who benefit and there also mm -hmm. needs to be a proportion of fewer than 50 percent of the board of trustees need to be uh, uh, fewer than 50 percent can be people who have these financial interests ah. as well uh, now i'm not prejudging that but that seems to be what has raised the heckles of the Charities Commission. But we are a million miles away from, you know, a bad taste in the mouth sure. after the nations brought Captain Tom and his family into our hearts. We are talking if there if there was a breach about naivety, inexperience, stuff happening very fast and trying to kind of catch the wave of something that as I mean, every mem member of the public with a with a, a heart and a soul was captivated by this, weren't they? And and I think we would have, you know, most most right thinking citizens would have wanted him to be supported as well as as well as possible. I, I do wonder, though, Joseph, and and to to step away from the intricacies of this specific case, I do wonder whether there are quite a lot of people who see what either the bosses of charities earn, um, some of the money that is paid out in costs from those charities, and think. Is uh, I'm donating for the right reasons to try and get this money to people who are desperately in need, and yet the boss of the organisation that I'm dating, donating money to is earning th sometimes upwards of 300 grand a year in some of these places. But there's a real commercial versus altruistic philosophical yeah. question there, isn't there, Tom? I mean, you have, on the one hand, uh, uh, you want uh, a sense that the uh, people that you're... Uh, uh, that you're donating to will be either volunteers or doing it for absolutely the right reasons and, you know, uh, and, and saving every 
penny possible to make sure that that goes to your uh, requested uh, intended cause. At the same time, however, the reality of uh, fundraising is that the higher quality and the better uh, mm-hmm. staff that these people can recruit, and that costs money, the more money they There's will be able to get in. There's a professionalising there, isn't there? There's a there professionalising really there, which you, would, which you would assume has a greater effect on the the uh, efficacy of the donations, that either there are more of them or it does more good. Yeah, because operationally, the goal of a charity is to get as much money in as possible for for the cause, uh, as efficiently as possible, as effectively for its budget. And that means that, that it, it runs like any other business marketing organization. Mm. The altruistic part is the fantastic work that these charities do. But you're right. It's something that, that, you know, if you look at it with that outside the context of that, it can seem rather strange. And it's the type of thing that certain, you know, journalists, you know, the kind of, especially tabloid print media, you know, often sees them, well, look at this, isn't this a scandal? But we're having a sensible conversation about it, aren't we? And we're kind of tr- trying to view it in its all its context. And it's probably more complicated than that. And I, I, coming back to the, the, the Captain Tom thing, you know, uh, if there are breaches, I, I, for one, would be tremendously sympathetic. And I'm certain that the Charity Commission would too, because this was work being done at speed by non-experts learning on the job and doing their best in something that had a fantastic outcome and beyond the 35 million that was raised the profile and the esteem in which members of the nhs who gave so selflessly has never been higher precisely because of this type of work yes and uh, joseph thank you so much by the way thank you very much indeed for your time and your advice joseph cotry monson director of mary monson solicitors on fleet street a legal commentator it's also the um the stuff that fell out of the Captain Tom Moore, I was going to say experience, but that feels wrong. The, the you know, the books that came out, uh, the children who went into school dressed up as Captain, it really, really caught something there, doesn't it? Uh, the, I, I, I'll give you this quote, Stephen Jones, Chair of Trustees for the Captain Tom Foundation said, as a young charity, we have been working closely with the Charity Commission since we launched, and we welcome their input following the publication of our recent audited annual accounts.